The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to this edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being along for the ride. If you want to reach out, email is the best way to do it. It's feedback at ami.ca. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter. If, if you're not following us, uh, come on, what's going on? Use that hashtag, AskDoubleTap, if you've got any questions. And you can now follow us on Instagram. It is at DoubleTap.online. We've got an exciting show lined up for you this week. Uh, that seems to answer some of the questions that you've asked us. It actually stems from a question that you guys asked us. I am Mark Aflalo, joined each and every single week by Stephen Scott. It's kind of like osmosis. Stephen, the question we get asked by so many people is, what 5G phones can I get that will not break the bank? Wow, that's a great question. And I'll tell you something, there are so many answers to that these days. I'm so glad this question came up because you would think with 5G being the latest technology that it would be extremely expensive to get on the bandwagon. I remember when 3G came along, when 4G came along, it took a while for you to get onto that bandwagon. You had to buy the highest end phones, but that's not the case anymore. And I don't know if the pandemic caused this because people didn't have as much money. So companies decided very quickly to start creating lower cost entry level. I don't even think budget is the right word to use, um, but certainly they created a range of phones across you know, a wide range of devices. And I'm talking here primarily about Android, but we can talk a little bit about Apple. I know I could all day, um, but, you know, Android is there and, and there are lots and lots of options. I know you've got your hands on, on probably most of them in your hands right now. Yeah, well, you know, you know, with so many de devices that come out each and every single year, it, it's really hard to keep track. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to do our best to guide you both based on, you know, what's on the market today and then some of the basics to look at when you're shopping, no matter what the year is. Because regardless of whether it's 2020, 2021, even 2025, there are going to be some basic entry-level things that you're going to want to make sure a phone has before you buy it. And, and that doesn't necessarily affect the price. Yeah, that's right. But, I mean, even on the low end or lower end range of smartphones, you're still getting an excellent screen. You're still you're still getting an excellent camera. I think the, the, the reality is for us in this world today, if you're going into the world of smartphones and you're looking especially right now at 5G and wondering what do I buy, the reality is that the, the base level now is so high level, right? I mean, you think about the cameras, for example, really good cameras and smartphones now. You don't have to go and get, I mean, it's nice to have a, an S21 from Samsung or the latest from LG or the latest Huawei or whatever, but the reality is you can get the lower end of those ranges and still get the high quality. Yeah, and you know what, You know, let's start off with some of the basics, for example. You know, we're gonna be talking mostly about Android phones, as you alluded to, and that's because really in the world of smartphones, there are Android phones and there's the iPhone. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there aren't iPhones that you can get that won't break the bank. That being said, they're not all 5G. You can go to Amazon like I did for my kids, and I bought a couple refurbished phones for under $400, and those are iPhone XRs, but they're not 5G. That being said, there will be 5G ones in the refurbished store soon, right? Well, that's right, yeah. And I will say that, you know, for me, if, if you're not looking at refurbished, if you wanted to buy new the cheapest entry level you have on Apple is the iPhone SE. And that does seem to be, and we certainly hope will continue to be uh, updated. That really is the entry level iPhone, but it's not 5G. Uh, entry level 5G at Apple is the iPhone 12 mini. And to, if rumors are to be believed, it's not coming back. It didn't sell well. It wasn't a popular device. It was the cheapest, the smallest 5G smartphone, but it didn't really do well in terms of numbers. The iPhone SE, though, hugely popular. Maybe that might be 5G next time around, Mark. So, so here's a question for you. Realistically, is 5G widespread enough right now to even matter? Well, that's a, that is a probably the biggest and probably most important <laughs> question you can ask, right? I mean, you know, it's great having the idea of having all this fast speed and connectivity, but if it's not available where you live, if it's not available in your area, if it's only available, say, in a city that you maybe don't happen to just live right in the middle of, is it worth it? Well, the answer is probably not. It's going to take a long time for the infrastructure to be in place, uh, especially if you live in rural areas. Uh, in some cases, you might find that you know Starlink might get there before 5G. Um, so, you know, let's think about this. Is it worth the money? Um, 
It's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because really what I'm looking for when I'm buying a new smartphone are the features of the smartphone, the connectivity I'm less bothered about. And you know what? Add the pandemic, add working from home. Okay, eventually lockdown will ease. People will get back out there. But more and more of us are working from home. We're using our home internet connections. So why do we need 5G at all? Um, I do think a day will come when 5G will become massively important in our lives but it's not here yeah. yet. Let's take a quick break, Stephen, because when we come back, we've got someone who knows a little bit about phones and the wireless technology, and he now works for one of my favorite companies, and that is TCL. Now, they've got new uh, two new 5G phones in their Canadian lineup that are really worth taking a look at, especially when it comes to not breaking the bank, and I've got one of them right here in my back pocket. Look at that. Uh, Stephen, let's take a break and come back with Paul Daco from TCL. It is Double Tap TV. Again, get involved. Feedback at AMI ca on twitter follow us at double tap canada and use that hashtag ask double tap and now on instagram it is at double tap dot online i'll tell you which phone this is after the break for more great double tap tv content visit ami.ca slash double tap this is double tap tv we are back on Double Tap TV talking all things 5G phones, but affordable 5G phones. Let's not confuse people here. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott by my side. Stephen, are you ready for our next guest? I am, although you know, I'd like to know when I get to talk about Apple phones. That is not the time for Apple phones. Our next guest is the Senior Manager of Brand Communications from one of our favorite companies, TCL. Paul Daco, welcome to the show. Paul, TCL has been making phones for longer than they've been putting their logo on them. What's the history there? Actually, yeah. I mean, we've been making phones uh, under other names since the early 2000s. You know, think flip phones, sliders, uh, slider keyboard phones. And, uh, and then the 2010s, we even started make, making manufacturing uh, devices for other very important names in the industry. And for years, we've been living under that shadow a little bit. So now I think it's time for us to put our name uh, loud and proud in our devices. And last year, we did the TCL 10 series and we're following it up right now uh, with the TCL 20 series. Uh, this gives a unique set of features in that premium mid-tier cat uh, smartphone category, which is gonna be really great for everyone here in Canada. Paul, when we look at the phone landscape, TCL price-wise sits at the lower to middle of the pack, but the features don't seem to match up. Now, because we're looking at flagship phone features, how do they manage to do that, get the flagship features in for lower cost? Well, one of the greatest strengths for TCL is the vertical integration part. I mean, this makes a TCL makes many of the components of the devices across a lot of categories while controlling the entire production process. By manufacturing most of these expensive parts of the smartphone, TCL can deliver the highest quality products at the best value, which is really great in this premium market right now. It's, it's incredible how we can do, we can offer into, uh, into, to the, into Canadian's hands. In Canada, TCL recently launched two models in the 20 series of phones. Can you elaborate on the two models and break down the specs on each of them? Sure, of course. Our flagship is a TCL 20 Pro 5G. It's a 6.6 inch full HD curved AMOLED screen uh, with a quad camera setup featuring a 48 megapixel main sensor with optical image stabilization. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 750G octa-core. It's got 256 gigs of storage, upgradable to another terabyte, a 4,500 milliamp battery with fast 18 watt charging and fast 15 watt wireless charging as well. You also have the more affordable option, which is a 20S, the TCL 20S, it also has a 6.6 inch LCD screen. It's got a similar quad, core, uh, quad camera setup as well. It's powered by the Snapdragon 665 and with 128 gig storage with expandable options and a 5,000 milliamp battery. Both these devices uh, feature Next Vision. Uh, Next Vision is our AI assisted image engine that automatically adjusts color temperature, sharpness, uh, contrast, depending on what's being displayed on the screen. I mean, it can replicate, you know, true flesh tones. It supports HDR10 video. Uh, it supports the same color gamut as movie theaters do, actually. And you're getting the most accurate colors ever, essentially on a smartphone. This means that you, when you watch a movie in the TCL 20 Pro 5G, you're seeing is that as it was intended to be on the screen, according to the filmmakers. 
and it even analyzes where you're viewing the screen so that it, uh, it makes adjustments, further adjustments, whether you're outdoors or in a dark room. You know, we are known for making really great screens and we want to replicate the same kind of great TCL quality is known for in these smartphones. I really feel that these phones are punching above their weight class in that premium mid-tier category. Paul, it's amazing how we define smartphones these days, less so on the voice quality of the actual phone and more on that camera quality. Now, now those quad camera arrays include what types of cameras on that device? Uh, sure, like I said, it, it's got the quad camera setup, the TCL 20 Pro 5G, and actually both these devices have a quad camera setup, but 20 Pro 5G in particular has a 48 megapixel camera. It's a half inch sensor. Uh, it's an f1.79 aperture, and it's got that optical image stabilization. Uh, this means that you can get great blur free photos, even in low light situations. Uh, there is a 60 megapixel ultra wide camera that will get you 123 degrees field of view. And I love using this when I want to get a lot more of that seen into the photo, right? Um, there's a five megapixel a macro uh, getting in really nice and close to the object. So I've been using this phone for a little while and I can get up to about a pinkies, <laughs> a pinkies <laughs> width away from my subject without it going out of focus. And finally, there is a two megapixel portrait lens, which lets you take awesome professional quality photos, you know, with that blurry background yeah. and that super in focus subject. And obviously this is a front facing camera, 32 megapixels, and you're even, uh, we have it so that you can even get great selfies, even when you're backlit. Software wise, Paul, and this is an area that interests me, how does TCL's flavor of Android stack up against some of the competitors out there? We wouldn't be TCL if we didn't add in a little bit of innovation, right? Uh, we run the latest version of Android. Uh, we are TCL UI, right? It feels very similar to the Google Android, but we have other features that we kind of wanted to add in there to give extra value to those customers. I mean, we have a feature called Super Bluetooth, which lets you uh, play audio to four wireless speakers or headphones at the same time. Uh, you know, it's perfect for discreetly watching a movie with your partner when the kids are asleep or if you're having a house party, you know, a socially distant house party when we're allowed to have house parties. Um, we're allowed to, uh, we also have a fully programmable um, smart key like right here on the side there. Uh, I love this feature. Uh, a lot of companies don't have something like this and this is really, really great. You can set up up to three different functions on this one button on the side, whether it's launching your favorite app or even more specific functions, like launching um, a, a function in the camera. So you can long press this if you want to, to launch the, the selfie camera or the pro camera. So many features. Uh, there is a three and a half millimeter jack at the top uh, so that you can listen to your music with your wired headphones, yep. uh, which is rare. <laughs> and at the top here too is an IR blaster. Uh, this turns this phone into a universal remote control, not just for TVs, but you can control, I mean, we're using this upstairs to control our dehumidifier, for example, you know, air conditioners, fans, set-top boxes, whatever it is, if it has an IR port, chances are it can, uh, we can use this device to control it. You know, on the TV side, TCL has always been my brand of choice when it comes to putting something on my wall. So naturally, I'll gravitate towards you guys on the phone side. Where can people go to learn more uh, other than their carriers, of course? Yeah, of course. You can go to tcl.com slash TA and at TCLCA on Instagram. Amazing, Paul. We're going to follow up with our hands-on review. But in the meantime, thanks for coming on. And we can't wait to talk again with you soon. That is Paul Daco, Senior Manager of Brand Communications over at TCL in Canada. We're going to take a quick break and come back and wrap up the show. Stick around. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being here. If you have a question for Paul Daco over at TCL, let us know. We'll get it to him. It's uh, feedback at ami.ca. You can reach out on Twitter if you're not already following us. Come on, guys. It's at Double Tap Canada and use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap, as Stephen Scott Bickers in the in the background. Uh, and of course, is this a new is this a new strategy for social media? We just shout. We at beg them. To do it? We beg them shout and yell at them, at them to follow us. Uh, he is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. Uh, also, if you want to get in touch with us on Instagram now, it is at Double Tap dot online. Uh, Stephen, in my hands, I have that TCL. 
micro device. Oh, I mean, you know. one of the things that blows me away about this phone, and really, I mean, it's an Android phone. It's great. It's uh, it's compact. It's thin. It's about the the same thickness of of the iPhone these days. Actually, a bit thinner. Still has a headphone jack on the top over there, which is pretty cool. But look at the back here. Look at the back. Let me describe this to you. Four cameras, as Paul alluded to when we talked about this. But guess what? No camera bump. Somehow. They've managed to keep this device with no camera bump. 5G flagship phone, no camera bump. Did I did I say that enough and times? It's still the same thickness. It's same and the, thickness the, as the same iPhone. same thickness as the iPhone. It's got a headphone jack. It's got you know all the all the water resistance you can expect. All the flagship features, and it's got a great version of Android. I mean, I don't think that TCL's version of Android differs that much from the stock version of Android, which is something that I know you're a big fan of, which is why you gravitate towards those Pixel phones. I do. I mean, I, I, and interesting, you talk about budget phones, and that's what our, our focus here. You know, I've looked at the uh, 4A 5G, terrible name by Google, but, you know, that's what it is. It's the Google Pixel 4A with 5G built in. And, you know, it does have that stock Android on it. But I'm hearing more and more people actually saying in the blind community that some of these overlays that companies use or these variants of Android are actually okay. Uh, it's just a case of learning how they work. I've always gravitated towards stock Android because I know that I'm getting that raw vanilla experience of Android. But when it comes to these devices, I think most of them certainly do seem to be more accessible now than they used to be, those launchers that you have on there. Can I, can I admit something here on the show for the first time? I, I don't think I've admitted it before, Stephen, but I, I really badly want to switch off of an iPhone. Um, not for lack of uh, liking the ecosystem. I don't mind the ecosystem. But there are so many cool phones that come out in a year that I wish I could just switch off of an iPhone and, and get things like FaceTime and iMessage, which are those two features that really kind of keep me stuck into that device. And I find myself carrying two devices these days because I'm testing the latest Android phones, um, but the iPhones are the same, you know, year in and year out for a one year period. But I'm desperately wishing that I could find a way to force myself off an iPhone. I think the only way that's going to happen is if my iPhone breaks, every Apple store in the world is closed, Amazon doesn't deliver iPhones in 48 hours, and I'm truly stuck on an Android phone for a good one to two weeks. But uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No, none of that's going to happen, Mark. But um, but this is the reality we're in, right? I mean, I feel sometimes like I'm trapped inside this. I've been kidnapped by Apple, and I'm stuck inside their amazing world, um, which I, in some ways I don't want to get off, but I also do. And I think about, you know, as a blind guy using voiceover on the Mac, I don't enjoy that experience as much as I enjoy a screen reader on Windows, which means I could come away from the Mac easily enough. So that means I could maybe move away from the iPhone. But it is iMessage. It is FaceTime. You know, we connect on FaceTime. We made this joke the other day. We were talking on the phone. Neither of the two of us have ever made a phone call to each other in our lives. We've always spoken on this. I think I tried to call you once when you were in Vegas at CES last year. I couldn't get you on FaceTime, so I tried to call your phone, and it didn't work. So I ended up catching you on Wi-Fi, which was kind of interesting. But, yeah, no, I, I wish, you know, I wish, again, not for not for not liking anything that Apple does. I like a lot of the things they do. I just feel sometimes that I could, you know, benefit from using the latest Android phone or playing with more of these devices. So hang on. Go, hang on. Oh, oh, would, oh. would you would, would you be... I mean, it's, it, Google certainly are pushing towards this new messages approach in Android 11. So would you go down that road? Because let's be honest, it's getting... It's as if Google want to create their own version of iMessage. They've already got Google Duo, which does what FaceTime does. So it would be possible for us to make the move. It's the willingness to do it. You know what? I, it's getting over the habits uh, and getting over just just getting used to something. You know, you're so used to something and the way it works. I I know instinctively how to do everything on an iOS device. On an Android device, there's that learning curve, and you need to get over that curve. It's kind of like when you start a new TV show. I find you have to watch two or three episodes and get over that hump of what the show is. Let it establish for you to really be interested. And I just started watching Ted Lasso, and we got through the entire series, the 10 episodes, in three or four days because we got through the first two that were uncomfortable and actually enjoyed the show, whereas there's some other shows that I won't name here that I've watched six episodes, and I'm like, I can't get into this. I can't get past that learning curve, or I can't get past that that taste curve. Some, you know, As human beings, 
we are creatures of habit. We like what we like. We don't like what we don't like. And we don't want to stray from it because it takes a little bit of effort. And I don't want to put that effort in sometimes. And I think that's the case when it comes to switching off of an iOS device. It's I'm a creature of habit. I've got home kids throughout my entire house. My kids have iPhones. My wife has an iPhone. Why would I be the one person to switch to an Android device? Yeah, and you're lazy. Well, let's just be frank about it. We're both lazy people. Why do who, who's got the time? Exactly. Totally. And and at the same time, you know, uh, even if I did switch to Android and I was a little bit different from everybody else, um, I, I probably find myself carrying those two devices around all the time, which is kind of annoying, especially when you're traveling. But at the same time, it gives you something to do, I guess, play on a different platform and, and see how things work, <laughs> I guess. I switched to Android just for something to do. That's the, uh, that has got to be the, I, I hope Google used that line down the line. Yeah, that's going to be a great marketing piece. I, why did you switch to Android, sir? I was bored. <laughs> I just wanted something to do. Stephen, thank you so much for being by my side each and every single week. I can't imagine anybody else here. Well, I could imagine a couple people, but I won't bring them up now. I could think of a yeah, few. Yeah, let's not do that. No. <laughs> On behalf of Stephen Scott and Paul Daco, thank you guys so much for being here talking all about 5G. Again, if you want to get involved, feedback at ami.ca is our email address. Of course, on Twitter, follow us at Double Tap Canada. With the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. And now on Instagram, we are at doubletap.online. We will chat with you again on our next show. Thanks for being here. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Latar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Aflalo. Social media, Andy Wynn. Segment producer, Sean Priest. Voiceover, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Karen Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP, content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.